Joining us now from the other coast is Max Gale. Welcome to the show, Max. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. Uh, especially I'm relieved that I got this all working with Beyond Chrome and everything. It was very last minute, remembering my passwords. And, you know. <laughs> I know those passwords. Oh. You know, I know you're just a, a tiny bit older than me, just a little bit. Uh, but uh, for whatever reason, Max, the passwords are driving me crazy lately. You know, I say, oh, I'm going to make something that's so simple to remember. And I just don't remember it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like a little fruit fly. I'm like, Err. you know, but I'm glad yeah. that the technology is working today. You've been traveling a lot. Where have your uh, travels been taking you? Are you like in a Winnebago or something with your family? We went to see, we, we both have daughters in uh, Texas. My daughter, India, lives in Austin with her six-year-old twin girls. And, uh, and Chris has uh, daughters in, uh, a daughter in, in uh, uh, Dallas. He came down to visit, you know, and then the plan was to go to Bali to see my son who's been trying to get everybody in the family to move there. But I messed up on my passport, yeah, to Bali. Oh, okay. So, so we went on a, a family and friends tour, we called it, which was to go see other family. We both have uh, kids who have kids, you know, up into San Francisco and then up into north of the Bay Area and Sacramento and all. And so that's what we've been doing, you know, just a just a few days here and a few days there. And, now, when uh, you, you know, when you're joining, when you, when everyone's together, uh, so what are some of the the cuisines? You know, like are you are you a good barbecuer? Do you barbecue or do you make food, Max? Or like, you know, do they they put you well, behind I, the grill you know, at all? You know, I I I'm not a I'm not a griller anymore. You know, I used to do all that, but but I actually we eat a pretty um, pretty much a plant based diet. Oh. Pretty much raw. I step across the street every once in a while and have some fish or something. But um, yeah, smoothies, uh, uh, um, you know, what some people would call birdseed crackers or something. But it's it's a healthy, I mean, really healthy. Who was it back in the day that was known for that? Was it Yule Gibbons or something? There's an organic well, farm you, 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 right down the yeah. street from me. Well, and Yule I just, Gibbons would talk about, you, know, yes. yeah, you can find this out <laughs> under your backyard. You know, so. <laughs> um, and there's certainly nothing but, wrong with that. My, my grandparents were farmers. You know, they came from a long line of people that just would eat whatever the vegetables were. And lately I've been in the same kind of mode. Um, I've been looking, there's a farm down the street from me called Rexer and they have organic produce. And I'm like, huh, I'm like, what is this vegetable? I haven't tried it before. And they'll give me a recipe and it's pretty good. So, uh, but I'm happy that you're spending time with your family. That must be so rewarding for you. Well, I have a whole bunch of kids that are really beautiful people and, uh, and they have kids who are also, you know, grown into beautiful people and and so that that's pretty cool i'm pretty i'm thankful to still be here and uh get to see them uh and i'm 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 eager to stick around and see what happens indeed um you've done a lot of television we're going to talk today about the soap uh role now did you watch soap operas before you actually got that role had you ever seen a soap in your life before? Well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'd seen them. The, the, the main way I'd seen them was uh, that when we were on our days, we were shooting on Barney Miller. So we, we rehearsed for, excuse me, I'm not supposed to say that. And I want to honor that. Okay. With the union. I'll know, beat that. I'll beat it. Union, it okay. supported me. So okay. yeah, that's me. Okay. But, but what would happen was on the days we were shooting, they'd have the, 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 the television on our set. I mean, in our dressing rooms. Before they fired up the cameras on our set, we would see the feed from General Hospital. And uh, and there was a guy Luke, who played Luke, who had been in a, a Strasbourg master's acting class. I've been with him and he was very, very dedicated and focused. And um, and it's so that but the, but the soaps are kind of the antithesis of what we were doing, you know, the long holds at the end where the person sits with that look in their eye while the camera zooms in, you know, a whole lot of things that, that caused some eye rolling. Uh, I just didn't take it that seriously, but I was really, when this uh, offer to come in and, and read for this uh, part of an Alzheimer's arc, I was really drawn to it and uh, my appetite just to work 
was real strong at the time, both the carrot and the stick parts of that. And, uh, and I had done a play called The Prodigal Father about a, a father who shows up at his son's loft in Chicago from the woods of Tennessee, and he's, he's got uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, and he's, he's never had a very bad relationship with his gay son, but he's there to ask his son to make sure he doesn't you know, hurt anybody. So I'd spent some time on, on, on what, are the, what happens when, when, when we lose it, you know, uh, and, um, and I had a great experience. The people were wonderful. Uh, some of them were just started, you know, the head makeup person was, the, was just getting started on that other show, you know, that I did years ago. And so it was a great experience. And, um, and I think people responded to it very strongly, you know, because it touches a lot of people. What caused you to decide that you wanted to grow up to be an actor? What did you do as a youth that might have been a good foreshadowing for the things that were to come in your journey? Well, I've always been a little resistant to the idea of growing up. You know, now at 80, I'm starting to think, well, maybe I ought to, you know, go ahead and grow up. Uh, you know, I was, my mother had been an actress uh, uh, um, before she got married. This was like 1943, I was born. So, you know, the war broke out. Um, uh, my mother had uh, seven kids in six years. Uh, she had four pregnancies and three of them were twins. So, uh, so, but she participated in the local theater. You know, it wasn't like such an odd thing, but it would have been my brother or my twin sister that anyone in the neighborhood said, who's gonna, who's gonna, I, I was more of a sort of into sports and science. But, uh, uh, but you know, sometimes you, 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 you kind of drift in design, I think of it, you know, by drift in design, we, we let go and drift down the river because we don't know what's up and then something happens and we go, oh, that makes all the sense in the world, so. Yeah, we find, we kind of find our way, I, I agree. You had said earlier, uh, before the camera started rolling, Max, that you are now picking up things that you didn't really have time for before, that you're really enjoying. What, what are some of those things? Yeah. Well, uh, t t two of them. One, one is that uh, I, I grew up in a musical family. My dad had been a piano player, band leader in the big band days. Uh, I grew up around music. Uh, it was my sister that took the lessons, and uh, but I eventually learned chords and stuff and got through college and grad school playing pickup rock bands and, uh, and um, the piano bar gigs that good players didn't want to play, you know, and uh, Time came where I had started uh, writing song, processing my own growth. You know, I wasn't like trying to write a hit song or something, but I was I call them my breadcrumbs in the cosmic forest, you know? So, uh, and that really opened me up in a way that I started to get uh, just creatively. And, and I started to get, you know, way more of the jobs that I read for. And one of them was Barney Miller. So uh, the music kind of took me on a journey uh, through a, a wonderful native artist, Buffy St. Marie, who's like my age and still still going, but um, and and to be involved with the um, American Indian movement and a whole lot of stuff that because I found myself, you know, playing. A, um, I, I wanted to sort of balance my karma in a way. So the music and in time, I recorded a bunch of songs and at the, at the push of my wife at the time, and it was right as before we ever really finished that project, we found out that she had cancer and it all got put on the back burner and she passed away a couple of years later. And then I was a single mom for a few years and then I remarried and, you know, so now I've got those tapes, I've got them digitized now and looking to share them. So there was a lot of just writing about uh, life. I, I, I'm hoping people will relate to them, you know, and the other one is that um, through that time, right around 1980, portable video was just showing up. And I was having this wonderful life outside of the show, uh, traveling around with people who were involved in, you know, the environmental issues and Native American issues and stuff and felt there was a way to do a docu-musical, I called it where music and getting at where we're all related rather than where we're all different. And I have all those tapes and I'm in the process of getting those digitized so I can make them 
available to other people who are interested in those times and also kind of tell that that story because it seems that we've come around full circle to uh, the same the same issues we're, we're dealing with them you know uh, anyway that I, I wish I could put that in a sound bite for you but uh, that's that's what I'm working on what you shared was beautiful and you know I always love have you ever um, heard about the way sagebrush grows so sagebrush grows in <clears throat> stalks and the only part that shows above the ground is just the stalk. But underneath, it's a complete tapest like woven tapestry, and we're all like interconnected. And I uh -huh. believe so fully exactly what you're sharing is that, you know, we might appear to just be one and singular when in essence we're all, you know, connected in one way or another. Yes. So I love yes. your project. I think yes. that sounds fantastic. And I look forward to hearing uh, more things about that. So thank you. Thank you for, you know, coming on today. And like I said, I know that you've been traveling and things of that nature, but gosh, it was so wonderful to spend some time with you. I used to well, love. Well, you've been very patient. Man. Oh, you're with welcome. My, uh, we, we had to put it off a couple of times because I was out driving and it could, anyway. Uh, <laughs> and it's nice to, nice to see you. Yes, it was nice to see you again as well. And, you know, even your, your wardrobes on some of the prior projects and things like that, like you made you made such an interesting, um, they gave your character such interesting style choice. And I still think like when I when I first met you, even though you're you're not the characters that you've portrayed, you're your own person, right? I just expected for some reason to just see you in that that type of garb. And I was like, oh, I said he's you know. <laughs> so you, uh, you've made you've I'm made the much a t shirt. You look cute. I'm pretty much <laughs> yeah. You're anyway, still you're still yeah. still cute as a button. So thank you so oh, much for joining oh, us. Wish you all the best. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.